Okay. What about you, Rob? You ready? Oh, John, are you uh, talking or are you chatting? Okay. Rob, would you like to go next? Sure. Uh, probably less is more. I'm finding uh, a lot of happiness in not having the crazy uh, fill your schedule all the time with uh, dates and parties and this and that. It's just a lot of just family time. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Frick, are you ready? John. <laughs> I'm sorry, John, are you talking? Mute your what does that say, Rob? I can't read it. Mike. Okay. Good idea. Miles, we're just listing something we learned during this period of a positive nature in five words or less. <laughs> it's a challenge. Five words or less? Uh -huh. There will be life afterwards. Excellent. Good to remember. All right. I feel like, I, I feel like things like in a holding pattern. Um, uh, and though I'm, I have little projects I've been working on, a lot of people are telling me that they are finding things to, to clean up and old photo books to go through and sell on Craigslist, et cetera, et cetera. Excellent. It's like well, the days go into the weekends, the weekends go into the next week. It's just sort of a holding pattern. I got to, uh, uh, I, I'm looking forward to this being over and something more engaging, directly engaging instead of in front of my computer all the time. Yeah, uh, this is not a good time for extroverts. <laughs> right? Yeah. Terry, did you hear what I was asking people to talk about? Oh, you're muted. Terry. Hey, Sasha, if you'll count James Harden on my login as well, so there's three of us. Okay, I'm so counting all three of you. I have a technical difficulty. We're all here. All right. Um, so, Terry, did you hear what I was asking people to do? Oh, you are muted. Oh, ma'am, I didn't hear you. Oh, okay. It was just a five word or less check in about something positive um, that you have learned or acquired in the course of this COVID. Oh, man. I, the quick version of that is that I've had the opportunity to spend so much time outside and in nature and, and really enjoy the beauty of where we live. And it's just been amazing. Excellent. Yeah, so true. Thank goodness for where we live. All right. Uh, James, we haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back. Yeah, you've got a broken shoulder. Wow. Okay. Just okay. Yeah. Oh, it's located. Yeah. But I found it. <laughs> it's now been located. Now it's been located. <laughs> and so do you have a five word or less check in about something positive through this period? Uh, run that by me one more time. Uh, something positive that you learned through this COVID period. Five words or less. My words are less that tells what you've experienced in COVID that's positive. People are getting together and helping each other out. Five words or less? Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> that's too bad. That'll work. Then you said keep on getting together, is that what you said? People are helping each other out. There you go. People are helping each other. There's five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. That leaves John Frick and also uh, Joe and Karen, if she's there. 
John, did you have anything? Okay, I can try something different. Can you hear me better? It's just better now. Right. We can hear you, but not better. For both of us, you and I are going to be making a movie. It's called Rise of the Introverts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's scream now as I speak. My, my positive thing is it's made everybody slow down and take a really real hard look at their life. Now, Five words or less. Okay. <laughs> We're too bloody busy. <laughs> too bloody busy. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I agree with you. Um, let's see. Uh, what about Karen? So I'm sorry, Sasha, but I'm trying to get the dogs. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's come back to you. Um, I'm trying to see. Oh, and so it looks like that's everybody except for Matt. Matt? Matt? Yes. Anything that you'd like to share with us in the way of five words of something positive you learned through this process? I have. Uh like kind of rediscovered my love of, of board games. My my partner and I have just been playing tons of board games and with so yeah. That's 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 what came to mind. That's great. <laughs> New that's ways to great. have fun. New ways to have fun while while staying at home. There we go. Okay, and I think mine is just about uh gratitude on a daily basis. That's my learning. Okay. Um, so do we Sasha, have any, yes, you're there. Sasha, sorry. Um the the screen is at its limit and I have John in the room with me so he can speak and hopefully the audio will be better. Yay. Yeah, I Karen Karen, I was gonna tell you we've we've run into this at City Hall when you're trying to run two computers with this, that are close to each other with the same meeting, they just start interfering. So it, it'd probably be better if you guys were just both of you were just on one computer uh, because yeah. otherwise the mics are going to create a bunch of feedback and we're not going to be able to hear you. We were in different rooms, but it was still providing feedback. So yeah, uh, John's it, here and uh, and there, the visuals are full, so you won't see us, but you can hear us. Excellent. Hello. Did you have anything you wanted to uh, add, either one of you, about positive learning in the COVID period, less than five words? John? Um, the honeydew list keeps growing. <laughs> I love it. I think my John would be totally with you on that. <laughs> but getting a lot done. Great. And Karen? Um, let's see. I've learned that less is more. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Um, well, thank you all for doing that. Sometimes it's easy to forget the things that we are learning in these trying times. Uh, so do we have any citizen comments? Looks like we're okay on that one. Uh, approving the minutes. I have one and, citizen comment. Yes. Hi, it's Terry. Uh, I've been uh, thinking about how we can uh, support the artists that were part of Art Fest, and uh, and also to keep the connection with them. And uh, and I, Lisa actually had a great idea, which was uh, to 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 promote them through uh, the Facebook, or at least put their name in there. And that would be Catherine's Facebook site, the Sunset Valley resident. Facebook site. So if you guys think it's a good idea, I'll contact Catherine about that. So that's my comments. Excellent. Um, do we need a motion about something like that? Uh, well, probably not during citizen comments, but 
I'm, I'm looking at people, and if if, 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 if I, I saw heads nodding, so I'll go ahead and do that. I can do that on my own anyway. But uh, okay. I want to run it by you. Excellent. We can come back to it in a sec, but uh, it sounds like a great idea to me. Okay. Uh, minutes from the previous meeting. Yes, Ruth. One moment, I'm chewing. <laughs> translate, too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, you're muted, Ruth. Okay. I just wanted to point out that Joe's name is Joe Hudson. He doesn't have a hyphenated last name. Dale is his middle name, but that can be changed for the next set of minutes, Matt. I just wanted to make sure you knew that his name was Joe Hudson, not Joe. I, I, I hyphenated yours, so I hyphenated his as well for equality. So <laughs> I know I'll, I, that's probably what happened. I'll fix that. I'll, before yeah, I close. you can improve the minutes as is. I don't have a problem with it, but I just wanted to be clear and let you know. No, we can make that correction for, for this one. Excellent. Other commentaries about the minutes? Okay. Assuming there are not any, then do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting? So moved. Terry. Thank, thank you, Terry. Is there a second? I'll second that. I'll That's second. Not. The way they do it at City Hall is they then have a discussion, open for discussion. Is there any discussion we need to have or are we ready to vote? What would the discussion be about? It would be, you know, we've never done this as a committee before, but I noticed many other committees have a first and a second and then open for discussion about the motion on the floor and the motion on the floor is just to approve the minutes as they stand other than the change from about joe's name okay notice uh, miles um I, I know this is the right place to mention this but because it's part of the minutes um everyone may recall that last time we were, there was an agenda item to go over the cancellation of art fest and where things stood with the finances. And I thought there were a lot of unanswered questions. You had directed me to go to Ray Jean, which I did, and I got copies of the uh, paperwork and the approval for payment to the vendors. But it was there that I realized something that was discussed in that meeting relating to art fest, relating to closing out and relating to the future that seemed not to be understood properly. And that was, we were talking about using uh, some of the artists in the future who we had signed on for ArtFest and only paid a down, down uh, payment, a down uh, deposit. The question was, well, how can we hire them? Wouldn't we have to uh, go through the booker and see that if she would object or not? And that was uh, something that um, was important for us to know because we should have learned this many months ago when we thought there was double dipping by the booker that she was both getting money from us to be a booker and getting money from every one of the artists, including the ones that she also represented separately. And um, there really is no contract for a booker. And that's what Mindful Marketing told us when they uh, were addressing that issue at one of our committee meetings several months ago. And um, so that being the case, I think we just need to understand as part of that old business, ArtFest 2020 cancellation, that um, we never had a contract with the booker and mindful marketing never really um, had anything in their five-year-old contract with us that dealt with it. And so to be aware that we are have we have a free relationship with any of these artists if we want to use them, even though Sylvia had pointed out that there's a, 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 a shelf um, ex expiration on deals like that. But it is important to note that going forward, we really have to determine the role of the booker. Is it, she just a salesman? making money for herself and running contracts that only protect her and her artists, which wind up being the case, or whether we want to actually engage her uh, as someone who represents us. But it's got to be clear what that is. And that's my only comment about the old business inside the uh, minutes. Okay, Miles. Um, 
I think that's an important comment to keep in mind. I'm not sure if that fits in the context of the minutes or if it fits in the context of sort of a, a new business piece when we discuss what's happening for the next art fest. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? No thoughts on it. So would we want to just make it a note somewhere in the minutes or make it something to address down the road? Uh, during the meeting, was I was sent to Ray Jean to get some clarification because uh, it wasn't available through our paperwork. So it, it's really up to you. But uh, I'm happy with any way that it just becomes part of our uh, working knowledge about what happened and also how to learn from that and how to proceed in a better way. Uh, whether it's in the minutes or not, it's it's it's. I just want it to be helpful, not to be. However, it gets yeah. to be helpful. Yeah. Okay, Terry, did you have a comment? No, oh, no, I, that 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 works for me. What? That uh, that that we're made aware of that as in the context of the minutes, and then you mentioned there's an opportunity to. Uh, to that's on the agenda to discuss it further if we want to okay so we don't need to change the minutes no but we need to make sure that we include it as a future discussion piece are we agreed on that i think we call that a friendly adjustment or something to that effect <laughs> um, <laughs> okay miles Thank you, duly noted. So I guess we need to make a vote on accepting the minutes as they are, knowing that that other piece will be included in future discussion. Um, uh, so, uh, I, I like Go ahead, Rob. Sorry about that. Um, I'll put my hand down there. Uh, so uh, I, I feel like the discussion after the two motions, I, I feel like Melissa brought this up in a in a city council meeting, it was just like one last little bit of clarity of like, what are we voting on? Yeah, yeah. And so it wasn't so much like discussion about that, but it was just like, just tell me one more time what we're voting on before five people lose their jobs kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I think that's what that, that little buffer was in there. Yeah. Yeah, we as a committee have never really done that. And I was just thinking maybe we missed something procedural. So I thought we should add it in, but Yes, Terry. Yeah, I think Rob's right that that doesn't have to be added in. That's kind of a clarification on what we're voting on. But if we wanted to add it in, then Rob and I, I have to, have to uh, accept a friendly uh, amendment. And I would accept it, and he would accept it. But I don't think, I, I'm presuming he would, I don't know. But it doesn't need to be that formal. I think Rob's right. That's just clarification of what we're voting on. Okay, so um, somebody was just Sasha. saying my name. Yeah, Sasha, it's it's the mayor. Just because I feel like you guys are, um, there's two separate things y'all are talking about. Um, what we do at the council level, which is actually part of the city ordinances, is that there's actually a a designated protocol for each agenda item, and the process is you open the agenda item. If there is motion to take some sort of action the motion has to happen first before you can discuss the action. So you can't discuss the action before a motion has been made. So the passing of the minutes, it's a little not as great of an example because oftentimes in the minutes, the only thing there is to discuss is whether you're approving it or not. But to answer Rob's question, what you might be discussing would be an amendment to the minutes. It could be an addition to the minutes. It could be, uh, for example, Ruth's comment where there's a name misspelled. Um, so that's that's why council does that. It's because you you take the motion, and then once there's a motion in a second, then you can discuss the action. So you can't discuss an action before there's actually been motion uh, to take that action. But we are not. Well, first of all, thank you for the clarification, Rose, on that. So in other words, we're not obligated to do that at at this point. Uh, um, that would be a good question for Matt to follow up on since it did come up recently that it seems like committees, there may be a gap in training for committees. And so I actually don't know. I know that for me, yes, I have to do that. Um, yeah. now, whether that applies to committees, that would be something for um, Matt to maybe follow up and let you guys know if there's a specific 
um, protocol. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow up on that. And we're going to be sending out, um, I know some committees have already received it, or, or maybe you already did, Sasha, but there's gonna, there's a short video. It's like an Open Meetings Act training that we're asking all committee and commission members to to, uh, to participate in. So maybe, and I can do some research too, and we, we can get some more clarity on this. But I think what, what Miles was discussing, um, yeah, r r really didn't have anything to do with the, the, the minutes themselves. Um, he just wanted to, I think it would be better to maybe discuss that uh, in the new business if, he, if that wants to be a, a proposed agenda item for the next meeting, discussing yeah. you know, future contracts with, uh, with booking agents and whatnot. That would be my suggestion. Okay. But, you know, Sounds wait then for a motion till we get to that item. Okay. Well, we just need to make sure not to lose it, and so we'll make sure about that. Exactly. In the meantime, let's uh, see if we can finalize our motion here to accept these minutes. Uh, so let's get a vote. All in favor? Aye. Okay. I don't see everybody on the screen, so I guess. Sasha, since we have um, since we have you know a couple people doubling up, I think the easiest way to do this, and we've done this in other committees, is you just state your name and say I. Um, or Great. or I can I can poll everyone too if that's easier. All at once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Why don't we just start? Um, state your name. It would be very convenient if Matt would state her name so we would not all state her name at yeah, once. Yeah. If Matt yeah. wants to call roll, okay. we'll just tell her answer. That's how we'll do it. Let me let me uh let me begin and just uh, you know unmute oh. yourself. I'll, and I'll before start. that, wait, Matt, the yes, motion I'll... is to accept the minutes as amended. written with the amendment of that one name. Correct. Okay. Correct. And so I'll start with the uh with Ruth since you have three. So Ruth. Hi. James? Yes, hi. Joe? Hi. All right. Uh, Rob? Hi. Troy? Hi. Miles? Hi. Terry? Hi. Karen? Sorry, I don't vote. Oh, that's right. Pardon me. <laughs> John? Hi. I was just seeing if you were awake, Karen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was with Karen. And, as, and Sasha. Yeah, I. All right, so motion passes. All right, thank you all. Slowly but surely we progress here. Um, Matt, can you make our agenda bigger again? Yes, I can. Thank you. I don't know if anybody else has the same problem, but I like to be able to see. All right, so. This next discussion I was hoping would be a brief discussion, and I'm talking about 10 minutes. Uh, last time we met, we had that confounding experience of trying to discuss um, rules for self-management or working together. And you all um, came up with a list of ideas. And if Matt is going to click on them, and we sent this out in advance, hopefully you got a chance to look at it. The idea was to just go through these items and see if there was if there was anything you wanted to discuss. Uh, and if I'm let me say that the flip side of that is if you don't want to discuss it, do you accept it as is as good self management guidelines for our group? So and did anybody um, Feel a need to discuss any of these elements or get clarification on them? Yes, Troy. Uh, Sasha, this this is a, a, a nice a nice uh, uh, collection of strategies. The only two I thought might be helpful for you know moving moving our com commission through the agenda is is publishing a a time frame for each agenda item. Um, one, it would help gauge if our agenda is too large to accomplish in our commission meeting. But um, so the two items in there are the the timekeeper to stay on agenda and 
Members should have two minutes to speak on a subject. Mm -hmm. one, one thing I've done as a program manager is, you know, the, the, the publishing of an agenda, it's sometimes helpful to establish a time frame for each agenda item. And it really comes down to just meeting moderation. And I'd recommend that the the uh, commission chair manage manage this. And we may not necessarily need limits on you know individual speaking, but we, if we need to, we can say it's a max max time li time limit. But that might help us uh, stay on the rails to get through the proposed agendas and you know as a moderator you could sort of keep an eye on the clock to say okay look we're 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 running close on time and closing on this agenda let's move on or let's let's get more comments um but that was my my two cents on the strategies we may not need a timekeeper i think we need a moderator and agenda times Mm -hmm. And um, those are that's good feedback, Tori. Um, I'm wondering how you would. I see that in city council they do it all the time. They have time frames for discussions and they put up a timer. And I've seen that in other meetings as well. And we could do that. Um, certainly for inputs, we could do that. Um, and so anybody have any reactions to Tori's thoughts? Yes, Terry. Yeah, I want to speak uh, in favor of what Troy was talking about. I think that our chair can moderate this. Uh, I think it's probably a good idea to have a feel for how much each item might take in terms of discussion. I think the uh, two minute limit is, is over structuring the, the meeting because sometimes it takes 20 seconds and sometimes it'll take three or more and, and then it'll also top the chair or whoever the timekeeper is having to call time etc and one generally knows when one is chair when it's time to move the discussion so and i trust your ability to do that so i agree with what troy said the the other a lot of the the strategies are are kind of civil behavior strategies for the most part not and everybody and we can get passionate at times but i feel like all of us will uh adhere to the to those uh civil agreements in terms of how we conduct our business mm -hmm. yeah and um so you're suggesting terry and troy that um I time frame our discussions better on the written agenda and then sort of bang on the clavel when it's time to move on. Yes, Terry. I, I, it's, I think that, uh, yeah, we're going to have to rely on a moderator to tell us when it's time to move on. That's for sure. Uh, I didn't even think of Troy's mention about ideas about how long the sections would take but that'll help the moderator when when you're uh when you're managing the meeting you know, it'll tell you when it it'll help you know when to cut people off because we have business coming up that's going to take a lot of time that kind of thing so it helps organize it's it that would aid you um, yeah. okay that sounds good i think the my own opinion is that the two minutes is um quite limiting and it's sort of an uh, artificial standard um, but i think also everybody being aware of the fact that well yeah tonight we've got to get the budget going so we can't really spend too much time on other stuff i mean even for this meeting today rob did you have a commentary God, what is that <laughs> I guess that means it's time to move on. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Co other comments? Uh, may, uh, Mayor, are you still here? You had your hand, have your hand raised. It, was that from earlier? 
maybe. Yes, that's from earlier there. It's thank you, Matt. Okay. Okay. So I think we will we can take out the two minutes time and um we can include a different sentence that talks about um the well I don't it's not that I, I don't really want to take all this responsibility. I'd like to have the group take responsibility for itself in terms of time frames. Um but to generally that will be part of my task, but also for each one of us to do that. I guess that's my sentiment about it. For example, Rob has done that often, said, okay, yeah, now we need to, the way he does it doesn't always, it's not always easy to hear, but he rolls his fingers together and says, okay, move it on, move it on. And I guess we need someone to do that. And maybe that needs to be you, Rob. Comment. I'm happy to do it. Yay. Okay. So together we'll work on time to try trying to time frames a little time frame things better, and then you can help with that. How's that? Yeah, and uh, let let me make clear this is not Rob Johnson's job. This is the vice chair's job. Oh, yippee! Good. When it, when, it, when I move on, it moves on. <laughs> well, the chair appreciates the vice chair's job here. Okay, so we'll, how about if we just take out the members of two minutes? All right, I'll, I'll do that. Karen, did you, you have your hand up. Did you want to make a comment? Uh, yeah, I just want to suggest that we do just that, take out the two minutes for people speaking. And when we're building the agenda, to actually think about how much time is going to be needed, because you want to make sure that for the things that you absolutely need to get done, that you have time to get those done. <laughs> Um, and you don't leave that to the end when you run out of time. So I think that's a good meeting planning. Just want to put that in there. I agree. And I could add this to like, like council does when they have a time certain, we could maybe do something like that with our agenda. So that we do have, a, especially something that needs to be voted on, that we don't, uh, you know, push that to the very end and then not have time to, to get a vote. And have to table it. Yeah, that which has actually happened almost every time that I facilitate a meeting. So I think that uh, speaks to some uh, areas of development for me. So I ask you for help in that regard. So Matt, we'll figure out a sentence to put in there about uh, time framing. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So aside from that, are we pretty good with these uh, rules of civility, as Terry calls them? Now, um, a parliamentary thing, do we need a motion to accept these, or can we just accept them and not have a vote about it? I would most certainly think we need a vote because it's our uh, point of engagement. And so with that said, I would move that we approve the, as called strategies working together, minus the sentence that Matt striked about the two minute limit. And that's my motion. Excellent. Do we have a second? I second it. Thank you, Terry. All right, Matt, you wanna go, oh, so we're not gonna have discussion, yay. Um, so Matt, do you want to go down the roll call again? I will, just just one moment. And so can can y'all see the screen? So basically it's these strategies and I, I uh, cleared out the one about the two minutes. Yeah, which we will, I will be maybe adding something somewhere to put the how to self-manage timeframes. But the, the, yeah, the motion now is to adopt it as amended for tonight. And so I'll call uh, the roll. Um, Ruth? Aye. Thank you, James. Aye. Thank you, Joe. Aye. Terry? Yes. Miles? Yes. Thank you, Troy? Aye. Sasha? Yes. John? Aye. And Rob. Aye. 
Thank you all. The motion passes. Thank you, everybody. Good discussion. Good discussion. Um, so, Matt, if you would take us back to the agenda. Council liaison report. Okay. And we're going to be hearing from Karen. Um, and I'll be brief. Um, our council meeting uh, last night was postponed because of technical difficulties in the spectrum outage in our community. Um, it will take place next Monday, the 22nd at, um, no, next Tuesday, sorry, uh, the 23rd. Uh, but it'll be the same agenda. There may be some uh, additional items uh, on those agenda items that are in the backup. So if you looked at the backup before, you might wanna check it again on Friday. Um, also, the uh, budget requests are due on Monday, the 22nd of June. So it's really imperative that uh, you all decide your budget for it for next year tonight. And um, there, as Matt mentioned, we are um, council voted to require all committee members to take the open meetings, open gov training. It's really quick. It's online. Um, and so that link will be going out to everybody. So um, if you take a take that, you get a little certificate you can print up and you'll be done. It takes like 10 minutes. Um, and that's all I have, unless you have questions about council. I have a okay. just to this. Hmm? Terry here. And this is just for your information, Karen, in regard to the uh, to the internet breakdown, uh, it didn't happen on Google Fiber. I'm on Google Fiber, so just for pl future planning. Yeah, um, it was a spectrum issue. Unfortunately, Terry, we don't have Google, fi Google Fiber on this side of town. Oh, you chic man, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> That's those sternanistas, man. They get it all. <laughs> <laughs> that's great all right that was a very brief report karen um one thing that it might be interesting to mention is that we did have sylvia and karen and i had a meeting in preparation for our budget discussion and um one of the things that we had to do was uh well the sylvia agreed to do was change the date that the budget would be due because of our meeting. Um, so I was appreciative of that and of Karen advocating for that. Because we would have been up, you know, there's been a lot of chaos about the budget. Anyway, um, thank you, Karen. And uh, Ruth, I thought this might be a good opportunity for you to report on your um, mission was to, which was to work with CED on the RFP that they are working on and I appreciate you doing that and also the fact that somehow your position morphed beyond what you had offered to do initially so if you do you have some comments for us about that I too will be as brief and hopefully as eloquent as Karen. I, um, yeah, I'm pretty much the ongoing, whatever it takes liaison with the CED committee. I had been on that committee for a number of years and prior to dating and marrying Joe. So it kind of seems pretty easy for me to go between the two. Um, Penny was very gracious. Uh, she had thought I was only there to help with the reopening event because the potentiality of having some musicians involved in our connections with those kind of entertainment sources. But as I expressed to her, and she recalls when I was on the seating committee, I was the one person that had a degree in <clears throat> digital media and communications towards marketing and things like that. So she, she was very gracious and welcomed me to participate in the RFP, even though that wasn't her understanding initially. So on the RFP, the item is in your packet. And um, I'm really excited to report that um, not of any... Uh, influence of my own, I don't believe, but um, I thoroughly went over all 11 um, proposals 
And the three top ones that I thought were most worthy of considering came out to be the ones that the entire CED scored and recommended to council and council agreed. And so the next, um, I'm not sure how it's going to work now that they've re, uh, they've moved the date for the council meeting, how that's all going to fit in with these presenters. But um, the next available opportunity, these, these three presenters, number one, resonance. Uh, it says they're from New York, but their principals, three of their four principals are in Texas. And one of them's from UT. Yay! I'm sorry, I know I'm a modder. And then another one's from University of Houston. And I forget where the third one was from. But at any rate, uh, although it says New York, don't let, don't let it bother you. They definitely have a presence in Texas and a lot of connection to clients in Texas. Um, Augustine, also uh, Texas-based, and Ampersand combined with Canalis so that their fields of expertise can fulfill the RFP. Our, well, Canalis is right here on Reese Drive, and um, Ampersand is also in Texas. So I was really thrilled that despite the lengthy deliberation among the CED members and all that went into it, that I really think the best quality candidates prevailed, and I look forward to seeing them presented. So. Um, be excited and look forward to seeing what the results will be. I think especially I like residents, they're my favorite because one of their principals uh, is the vice president of story, which means she wants to do uh, focus groups, she wants to hear history, she wants to understand identity, and she doesn't want to manufacture something that she knows will sell. She wants to know the authentic real identity of what it is that's being put out there and then create an avenue of communication with the public that will connect to that. And I love that philosophy. I don't want to see us become call girls when we're really um, ball, bellhops or something. You know what I'm saying? I want us to be authentic. I don't want people to come here because we can put on something that we're not. I want them to come here because we are who we are and they're attracted to that. So that's what really aligned me with resonance. I'm really glad they were number one on the list for being considered. So. Just keep an eye on it and look forward to some good stuff in the future. I'm done. <laughs> Excellent, Ruth. Thank you for a succinct report on that. And uh, I guess, Karen, you can respond that will these presentations occur at the next council meeting? Karen? Uh, yes, the, the agenda will remain the same as it was for the meeting that was supposed to take place this week. So all three, the top three will be uh, presenting. They have 15 minutes each for presentation and 15 minutes for Q&A. So that will be on the agenda on the 23rd. Yes, and this is Matt. The agenda will be posted tomorrow and uh, there'll also be links to all three presentations by the, the firm. So, you know, if you're interested, um, you can look through their presentations ahead of the meeting um, and then, yeah, you're more than welcome, you're all more than welcome to attend council and give your input. And if I may encourage our commission, um, one of the comments that I made specifically, which was taken as a public comment because I don't sit on that CED committee, was actually included in the criteria for the three agencies preparation to present to council. So I really think that's going to be um, I think it's going to go forward with a lot of cooperation and consideration. I'm looking forward to it. And, and I would um, also remind everybody that um, if you go to OpenGov and you go to the art, uh, the council meeting link, you can also put your feedback in there on the record. And so council members um, do look at that ahead of time of the meeting. So that is, um, I found that myself very helpful. Um, so feel free to use that mechanism for citizen input also. Yeah, that's actually probably an important, well, definitely an important point, Karen, because that's kind of, I think, going to be the way of feedback for meetings in advance, et cetera. And it really does give you a very succinct presentation of everything there is to consider as you're moving forward on that. Uh, Ruth, thank you very much for a good report and also for your, I, I listened to your commentaries as you were in the meeting and I think they're very insightful and appreciate you representing us a lot. Okie doke.
Uh, let's see. So the most critical part of our meeting is here for today. And it's 60, 651, staying with Troy's concept of moderation. Uh, so I believe we can pull this off because we really only have to deal with the budget and talking about cultural tourism as the critical components of the rest of our meeting. And I asked Karen to handle this um, because she had a lot of good ideas to start with. And when I say handle it, she is, has presented a framework for us to think about the whole budget process. And I want to just preamble also by saying that um, I'm not unaware of the work that everybody did um, going back to from our last meeting of ideas for short and long-term successes, but suddenly the budget is kind of upon us and we need, to, we need to make some rather quick decisions and maybe hold on to some of those other ideas for implementation a little bit later on, you know, lest we end up losing budget because we didn't, you know, jump on the bandwagon fast enough. So with that, Karen, I'll hand it over to you. And I don't know if this is, yeah, I guess this is where you'd like Matt to be, too. Um, um, actually, I think we can jump right into the, yes, that that's the document, um, the discussion and the decision items. And um, I will say that the original deadline for our application for hot funds for Art Fest would have been the end of May. And of course, with COVID, uh, there was a lot of uncertainty, and there still is a lot of uncertainty about where we are. We did recently, uh, council this month got the uh, sales tax revenue uh, and it was 42% uh, below what we um, what we normally get, 42.6% below for the month of April. So um, we weren't as dire as we thought we were going to be when we uh, made cuts at an 80% reduction level. Um, but still, having said that, uh, we're council still trying to figure out moving forward on budget and where we're going to be and what the um, finances come up with a uh, bronze, silver, and gold levels for consideration for the other committees uh, going forward that would apply to our general fund. So the way the Arts Commission applies for funding is from two categories. One is the hot fund, which is funded from the hotel occupancy tax. Um, the hotel, uh, Sylvia told me yesterday, is at about 15% capacity. So they've been hit pretty hard. The general fund is funded by sales tax revenue. So those are the two pots of money that Art Fest, uh, Arts Commission touches. The hot fund has the requirement of being like a tourism has to promote tourism um, and the general fund is what we usually do for community events so those events are typically not promoted outside of the city of austin so we don't do big advertising campaigns for those but the hot fund is is promoted regionally because the purpose is to bring people from outside of our normal region um, into the city so with that said, um, our deadline for the hot fund that got bumped from May was supposed to be on the 15th of this month, which would have been before our meeting tonight. So uh, as Sylvia mentioned, um, Sylvia did change that on the finance committee schedule. So we have until Monday, which means we need to make a decision tonight in what the ask is going to be. And so it's the what is should be our focus tonight the um how it's going to be done needs to be determined after we get the budget in and get a request in so we were supposed to go out for an rfp for the art fest so all of that will need to be settled but here's some questions that the committee needs to think about um, uh, as to how you want to move forward the first big question is do you want to promote Produce an art fest for 2021. So this is an invitation to discuss. Correct. And um, 
it might be important to talk a little bit about the um, well, the losses that occur if if we do decide not to produce the art fest. Um, but it also might be just interesting to hear a, a quick yay or nay from everybody. So I will say that we have 13 years of equity built in this program through the Arts Commission, and that would be a consideration. Miles? Go ahead. In regard to moving forward with ArtFest, it's really sad that COVID got in our way because there was a chance in 2020 to break out of some of the restraints that we've had before, things that are now legacy that make a problem for me and I think for other people about continuing. And they are not having a uh, standard for what makes a successful art fest uh, event, just like we don't have a standard what makes a small community event. Is it 20 people, is it 50 people, is it 100 people? Um, it's never really been determined. We have an idea by having the ads on TV, people get to know Sunset Valley a little bit better, but we don't know if the ads and type of image with that logo that we're producing is doing anything for the image of the city. We have the idea that a certain number of people come, so that's good for them to know we're here, and that does fulfill the requirement of the hot funds for cultural tourism. But we really don't know how many people are coming. We've been using a, a guest that was provided by the uh, 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 the SFC guy a few years ago. It was a very accommodating, pleasant guest to our ears, but there was no way of knowing if it was true. And that, that provides a problem because we have a responsibility to the city, to council, to give an outcome, an accurate outcome of what each art fest has been, and I don't think we really have that. Now, the problem that was the reason I think it's sad that we didn't get to do art fest in April is that we had some new blood, new ideas on the commission. People came up with ideas fairly easy to implement and how to get a, a, um, a number for the number of people that are there. But now, now it's going to be a two-year gap, and now we're going to go say, well, we used to say we have between, you know, seven, we had 7,000 people, five or 7,000 people. That was two years ago or a year and a half ago. It gets, not only was it a, a, an inaccurate and a, I don't know if it's a credible number, but it becomes a, more distant uh, if, if you're doing this in uh, 2021. So um, I, I wish we had a chance to really get that under our belts, to really get a number and know what it is. And furthermore, I wish we had a better track record of showing that we had better management of uh, the marketing agency. I think it hasn't been so good, it hasn't lived up to its potential. Uh, um, there's been no innovation out of the firm. Uh, there's been no um, creativity, no social media. Um, uh, I'm, I'm really down on the way um, um, mindful ma um, marketing performed. Uh, I will say this, I don't think they were overpaid though. If it's for an event that involves someone's participation of such a long period of time. You could have someone show up and be there all the time. It wasn't like we lost a lot of money, but we deserved more. We deserved to be a real 21st century operation uh, and we didn't get that. So, so the, my point being is that we just had, if we had gotten a chance to, to, to demonstrate ourselves uh, as more worthy of the 81,000, now $71,000 worth of funds uh, in April, it would be more comfortable, more easy for uh, uh, for uh, I think for the city to uh, green light it for next time around, um, and in which case now there are other options about how art fest will appear. Is it scaled down? Is it does it become sort of a winter event tanked into the shopping centers? Um, you know there are other ways of doing it, but um, I, I feel that uh, even in terms of sponsorship and going after people, be, I feel a lot better if we had pulled it off this last year. Uh, but instead, we're going into 2021 with uh, an old track record that doesn't really say enough specifics. So, Miles, just to uh, summarize, you are regretful about what we don't have in the way of data and uh, more uh, definable success under our belts or visible success to others. But if you were leaning towards yes, I think we should go ahead and do it versus not, what would your inclination be? Uh, I think it's, it's sort of mixed in with one of the other options that's on the pages of short and long-term uh, goals or some of the paperwork out here. 
maybe it needs to be something that's smaller and tied in with a winter event. Um, and maybe, okay. it maybe it doesn't look the same as it has in the past. Maybe it doesn't have the same type of budget it has in the past. Maybe it starts to incorporate a look that's consistent with the look that Sunset Valley is going to have to the outside world. Um, I don't know that the look that we've presented uh, through the advertising, through the graphics, or even through the type of arts and project, uh, objects that were on sale is going to be the new look of Sunset Valley, and to, which a lot of people hope expresses our inner real identity and not a manufacturing identity. So I'm not so sure that it's going to be, it, it ought to be uh, full-fledged as it has been in the past. Okay, thank you. Other comments in the regard? Uh, yeah. Rob, Ruth, and Terry all have their hands raised on this. So okay, on my screen I see. Well, let's do, let's go uh, uh, Rob first since you're on my screen first. Okay, sure. Uh, so uh, I, I will just say about the uh, you know should we have a 2021? Uh, I I'm in favor of kind of going through the motions like we can. I have a very pessimistic view that we're even going to be able to have one. I think this is going to happen. Like the COVID is going to be with us for a while, uh, barring some miracle. So like any money that we spend towards it, I think we got to be, we just got to recognize that that money, some of it is just going to go out the door and never come back. Uh, so like plan is if we're going to have it, but because um, I don't want to roll over and die either and just say like, eh, hey, well, you know, we'll have one the year after everything is like 100% okay. So I'm willing to like, you know, send some money out the door, like maybe arrange the contracts in a different way so that we're a little more protected, have the insurance. The insurance rate for events is gonna be crazy expensive though, I guarantee that. But uh, so that's where I I kind of vote. I, on this, uh, some of the other stuff that Miles was talking about though, like. I had gone to the art fest as just a punter and just like there's lots for the kids to do we had fun bought some stuff uh i didn't really think of it as like success or failure like there was lots of people there you know lots there was no no number to that but i i sometimes see the lack of you know knowing how many people there were uh the lack of social media stuff like that it is kind of self owns in some ways or you know it's like things that we should have been doing but that's those are opportunities too you know it was like a, what i saw as a successful event without doing any of that stuff so it's just like i'm very optimistic that you know once we start uh fulfilling some of those things like it will be a, an outrageous success but again 2021 plan for it but it's probably not going to happen that's me Thanks, Rob. Ruth? Hi, thanks, Sasha. Um, in my view, considering what these three different marketing firms are coming forward with in their time frame, which would be in three to six months, I'm feeling that we're going to be able to capitalize on some very professional insight in designing to carry forward with a 2021 Art Fest that won't be like the others, which is good but also we'll be able to incorporate more of the authenticity of who we are and bring us into a new place that will ensure we can continue to bring in outsiders into our city, which is what hot funds are all about. I mean, it's not in the legal uh, description, but heads and beds is what they're going for. I mean, it's a, it's a scratch my back, I'll scratch yours thing. So I really think, and I'm thinking, you know, granted I am a victim of being positive, but I really think we need to go forward to assume we are going to have a 2021 Art Fest yeah. without saying it's going to look anything like the past. It may have a whole new angle. It may have a whole new structure. It may have a whole new message to it. But I really think when these companies come in and they do their focus groups and their histories and they understand the identity of our community, they're going to know we're a strong and a vibrant community and something like COVID is not something we're going to let throw us around and we can come forward it will be different but we can come forward with an event for those outside our community come 2021 at least that is my hope and that is my belief so made a good point if we don't have it we lose it that's right yeah 
I didn't hear what you said, James. Uh, tell Joe, Joe's the one that said it. I next. spoke and said, we don't have it next year. We're, we're going to lose it. We're just not going to have it ever. That's just my two cents. Because mm -hmm. I, I see the writing on the wall. And the, the writing on the wall says? I don't. If we don't do this next year, whatever it looks like, then we may not have another one. We won't get an opportunity. We won't get an opportunity like to have another one. And mm -hmm. a lot of people and really enjoy this. The artists get to come and just kind of, you know, they're, they're trying to get out there and put themselves out there. They're the musicians. It's just a fun thing, man. Mm -hmm. What's money? Okay. Do we lose money on it? No. I don't know. I'm just thinking about what are we losing here? Are we, are we so focused on the bloody money? Really? 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 I mean, I mean, I was joy and having a good time, and having a good time building a community. And if we're so focused on this kind of stuff, then no. Spoken like a true artist. I'm, I'm an artist. <laughs> nice to hear you talk, Joe. Nice you still talking about bringing joy to people's hearts. The community coming together, having a good time, just putting the world behind them for four hours and just enjoying that commercial fest. It's not a commercial fest. It's not about making money. It's just having a really nice afternoon. Enjoyable. Excellent. Thank you so much. And Terry. <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree with uh, Miles' uh, insight to some of the I'll just call it management deficiencies of the as they did in the past. Uh, I agree with what Rob said in regard to uh, going forward with it and with Ruth uh, and and the the gentleman who's the artist. That's the spirit of it. Uh, the art fest is the best thing Sunset Valley has going up into the coronavirus. It is the one premier event for Sunset Valley. And it could have been done better, but it will be done better. So I'm in, I'm uh, in support of doing it next year. Now, in terms of options to reclose, in 2021 won't look like 2020, and 2022 may not look like 2021. But uh, in regard to question C, willing to explore options to reclose, relocate the event. And in Santa Fe, they have uh, the Indian Jewelers. The craftsmen who sit who sit in the square in front of stores and sell and vend their wares, and it's part of the culture of the place. I could even see that we set up at the shopping center on the sidewalks. That we're going to compete with the shopping center uh, stores, maybe a little, but uh, it'll definitely help our the people who we have have people come and be there. And it'll bring people in the shopping center who wouldn't have gone there otherwise. It, it's going to be hard to figure out how to incorporate the children's events, et cetera. But there are uh, public spaces around where that could be organized and done. So, yeah, I'm for doing it again. I agree absolutely with the point of view that if we don't do it, it's gone because there's too many, uh, there's too many competing interests for these funds. If Once they're assigned somewhere, they're going to probably stay there. So that that's a practical reason for doing it, but it is the best thing we have uh, going. So I'm I forward. love. Forward. Thank you, Terry, and I love to uh, hear you say that because um, people have worked really hard on this for a lot of years, um, and I think it it has been a very successful event, despite. But you know, when you have Karen and John out there marking out the spaces and other people saying, oh, yeah, let me bring some jugs of water. And you kind of are there. And it's really quite a success in that regard. Um, so thanks for the thoughts on that. It looks like we've got um, good agreement about something here. I was wondering, Troy, if you had anything to say about this. So my my desire to produce art fest in 2021 has evolved with this discussion I, I originally thought no it was risky but I, i'm saying yes with cautious optimism um you know i everything 
all the sentiments everyone has expressed um, says we 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 should try to move forward. Let's commit. Let's commit to it. Let's let's see what the environment allows us to do. And so you know, echoing what Bob said, Rob said is that you know any any early any early spins that we make um, may we we do risk losing. Um, in the defense of Artfest, um, it, it it is a it is a lovely event. It is the city's best event besides the weekly farmers market, and it has grown and gotten better every year uh, thanks to a lot of the sweat equity of of John, James, and Karen. So you know we the one one of the metrics that we do have is the increase of the vendor vendors that the artist booths that are that have um, that have uh, grown through throughout the years. That's my that's my comments. I, I say yes. Let, 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 let's go forward cautiously, and it may look different. It may be the same. It may be smaller format, but let, let's let, let's let's proceed. Okay, Troy. Thank you, Rob. I saw your hand up. Yeah. So uh, to move this to move this along, uh, are we just saying like, will there be some sort of do? I like one D seems to be like the actionable thing here. Uh Karen, I'm not I'm not sure what what you're looking at. Yeah. Uh, so from a... so um I think that the <clears throat> answering the first question, if you want to produce it or not, was the was the bottom line basically. The how uh of how you move forward with it, how it looks, you have plenty of time to work on that and put out a new RFP or whatever you all want to do. But the deadline for the budget is Monday. Um, yeah. and, and there are other great ideas that we've talked about in the past, but I don't believe there's time to build out the plan and the finances and the budget for any of those for 2021 with this short timeline. Also understanding that we're in a COVID-19 recovery budget year in 2021. And we're, um, we don't know what we don't know. So we're trying to figure out how to move forward with caution um, and understanding that it's gonna be fluid um, depending on what happens. And so um, rather, rather than lose the opportunity altogether, uh, if you wanna go forward, then you need to submit a budget. So the next step would be, um, I, I took the budget that we had from the year that this year that got canceled and just added. So the next question would be, do you want to launch a sponsorship program to support it? And if you do, then um, a package, a sponsorship package would need to be designed and it would have to go to city council for approval. Um, Miles had started down the, the road of sponsorship last year, but we never got the whole thing together to go to council. Um, but those sponsorships are contracts, and so they need to be approved by city council. Um, it, so that could be a yes or no. Yes, if you, if you want to, then I plugged in a $10,000 amount in a draft budget that would reduce the request for hot funds by $10,000. Um, if, if no, then you take that out, and it's the same request that we had this year. So that's something for you to think about. Um, are you willing to relocate it, uh, the event closer to the shopping district? Um, that's one thing uh, as we look at COVID recovery and bringing as many people back into our city as possible, pending the ability to do so with the COVID restrictions. Um, there are some opportunities at the shopping center um, that need to be explored. There are some small spaces having talked to the management firms they're open to working with us but one of the big places that we might want to look at and we haven't had a chance to connect with their leadership yet is Kohl's they have a whole section of a parking lot that is plenty of space they have two parking lots basically and it's separated by islands on either side and that could be a location that you explore but all of those things about the where and the how and the who um, are things that if you decide to go forward, you can start now planning those things out and how you wanna make it different 
and what you want to do in media and all the other things, but not not for tonight. So tonight we just have to figure out the what. Um, okay. So, so do we need to make a motion to? I like to. I would like to put my uh, words in here. Oh, sorry. Uh, John, as a founding member and having worked so hard on 13 art fests and seeing it grow from 12, 10 or 12 booths around City Hall to what it is now, um, I see no reason not to do it. I kind of agree with Troy and Joe in that that uh, if we don't do this, I'm afraid we are going to lose uh, the not not only the the hot funds uh, to some other groups or whatever, but but just the uh, momentum that's been built up, uh, and uh, these artists are going to think that well, you know, some of them have come to several of them, uh, five or six, whatever, more than, more than that even, and and uh, they're just going to. Uh, uh, forget about us and, and start going somewhere else. So we will be starting over if we don't do it uh, at the latest, uh, 2022. And I say 2021, uh, we should go for it. And and whatever happens with the COVID, whatever happens with the shopping centers, with uh, you know uh, the hot funds or that the hotel's still going to be in business. Nobody knows. Those are all questions that are hanging out there. And we do have a, a reserve that we can tap into. The city has uh, money that's been put aside. Uh, some of that's going to the marketing of uh, RFPs and all that. And uh, our art, fans, art Fest could also be part of that. It just all has to be worked out. But as far as either doing it or not, um i say yes so okay. unequivocally yes thank you john and and so one of the things we do have um we've built up some a lot of equity with the, the uh, vendors we have quite a few vendors who have been with us 11 and 12 years um so anyway um terry um, okay. terry one comment from you and then uh, just before you make it i just want to be mindful of the fact that it is 718. Um, so we probably will need to reach a synthesis on this very shortly. Okay, Sarah, thank, Sarah. You. thank you, Madam Chair. I want to make a motion. I want to move that we uh, we do produce Art Fest in 2021 and we put in a budget at reduced by $10,000 as, as suggested and that we uh, launch a sponsorship program to try to offset the ten thousand uh, dollars and i do that in the context of the revenues the, the uncertainties that over the past two months i've, I've looked at it over uh it was with the reduction was 33 percent so the worst month was april at 42.6 percent it's not going to be 80 but there will be a reduction there's just too much uncertainty and we're still in the pandemic. It's gotten worse, not better. Uh, but I think that's workable, and that's a uh, a reasonable uh, budget given this the revenue situation. So I'm, I make the motion we do it again and reduce the budget by ten the last year's budget, ten k. Well, uh, I would be looking for a second. I. <laughs> okay, we've I, got a second from Joe. Uh, Miles, a comment? Uh, yes, I worked on the sponsorship program for about six weeks, and um, and that was without having enough materials or information. I was able to get ahead. I actually had Central Market willing to write a check for five thousand dollars to be the premier sponsor. I also had an in-kind donation from. The company that owns the four Rudy's franchises and the four mighty fine locations, including one in Sunset Valley, one thousand dollars or so worth of uh, of uh, entertainment. Um, I don't know how much more you'll be able to get above that, especially uh, you know with the numbers being so unverifiable. So I believe the ten thousand dollars is is a lovely wish, 
but I don't think it's realistic. And I'm wondering if maybe the better way to go about it is to keep our original budget with that advertising that's maybe necessary to generate the type of uh, attendance and any type of sponsorship of money we can get in looks great to city council and to the rest of the community. Hey, we've innovated, we're doing, we're doing sponsorship, we're doing social marketing, we're doing some other things with the uh, stores. But I, 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 being the one who's making the calls and pricing it, I just don't think that 10,000 is going to be a realistic number. And we'll, what happens, we're promising it, and then we're now we're $10,000 short on the advertising. If the advertising is that necessary, and there's never really been any type of uh, metrics done on knowing why people come here and who those people are or how many there are. So that, that my, my proviso about that is just that I don't, I don't feel comfortable about the 10 grand, having spent the six weeks calling, pitching, and doing it. So what I would like to do is withdraw my motion, but I still want this to happen. Somebody else make the motion. Um, make a motion to uh, submit the uh, for the budget for the original amount. We can always give money back. Um, so anyway, sorry, I make a motion to uh, vote to move forward on ArtFest 2021 in some capacity. Okay. Second. Do we have a second? Hold up a two-finger. All right. I see Joe there. So we have a second from Joe. Okay. And you were talking about the budget, though, Rob, and you sort of then cut back. Did you did you say with the original figures? I, yeah, stick with the original figures. If we, if this is just me talking, if we get a sponsorship, we can always give money back. Like Miles said, the city will take it. <laughs> They'll be happy. Um, but yeah, it's just you know if we if we end up ten thousand dollars short to run it, then I'm gonna come to all y'all with a hat. <laughs> <laughs> gonna have to be a big hat. Yes. Okay. So Matt yeah. has budget up on the screen, and Matt, if you can, if you would take out the way the hot, um, this budget is designed. Uh, Regine had to set up, there's three categories. One is what we bring in, that's considered general fund. And then there's the hot fund budget for the arts and the hot fund budget for advertising. So Matt, if you take out that 10,000 sponsorship from the top box, and then the number going forward in the budget would be zero. So take out the 10,000 in the 2020 budget. Take out both 10,000s and that, whoa. <laughs> that puts, yep, the other, there you go. So that would make that top budget zero out with the money from the booths and the t shirt sales. Yeah, zero. And then if you put that 10,000 back in advertising, which is where I pulled it. So the paid media would go, um, and we can adjust this budget as you go on, bring that one back to 26. Yep. And then the bottom line on that would be 41. And that puts us back to what we had for this year. So that means we um, we need to stay within this budget um, and we need to, we'd need to keep that into consideration when you um, decide how you want to change it and if you want to do an RFP and how you write that. But um, good work. $81,100 request from the hot ones. Uh, up on the top of the page above this, I think is where that total is. Yeah, oh. 80, that would be 81. And the advertising would go back to four one. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, we'll just make sure those numbers add up. <laughs> okay, so, there's, so there's a motion on the floor, and, and, and Rob, you understand. So the motion was to um, basically use this budget, as we've just corrected, taking out the 10000 uh, from the potential sponsorship, taking that out. Yes, and we had, we had a second from Joe. So I want to make sure everybody understands the figures that um, Matt and Karen just went through. 
And it's true that we have flexibility within the range of those figures, correct, Karen? Uh, that's correct. And um, you can uh, modify the budget. And uh, while this is a detailed budget, I would still um, I believe it needs to go before council before you actually spend any of the money. Um, right. So that was something that council changed this past year. So. Okay. But this so, is something to submit on Monday. But, Sasha, the, uh, let's see, Rob, d did you have your hand raised? Do you need to make a comment? Nope. Sorry. Oh. And then mayor, do you, did you want to make a comment? Yeah, I just had a question for Karen and Sasha and maybe even Matt, um, cause I'm envisioning what you guys are going to pass today. It then goes to budget and finance to get their stamp of approval. It then comes to me. Um, yeah. and then I have to figure out how to incorporate it into the mayor's budget to get council to vote on it. Correct. And so I'd, I'd like to see this committee discuss what I see as a little bit of an elephant in the room. The reduction in sales tax is different than the reduction in hot funds. And currently, mm -hmm. Karen, correct me where I'm wrong. I thought that we were at a hundred percent reduction for our hot income. And you may have had more communication with Sylvia on that, or Matt, you may know. Uh, yeah. We we have not received so okay so f uh, fiscal fiscal year speaking we received a, a a check back in January which was for first quarter we have not received a check uh, or or funds from the hotel uh, since January so um, yeah we are at a greatly greatly reduced um, hot fund revenue. So I just wonder, is that Very worth the committee? This is that worth the committee discussing, or is that um, Sasha and Karen? Is that something where you all want want to even give? I, I just I, I have a hard time seeing how budget and finance is going to vote on it to recommend it, um, or how I'm going to sell it to council if we have a hundred percent reduction. And Karen, ideas I had was that do you all want to potentially ask that a portion of your funding come from general funds this year? Actually, Mayor, um, it was my intention to advocate for this coming from the reserve since there's 700,000 in the reserve. And the email I got from uh, Sylvia this week, she had talked to the owner of the hotel and he said he was at 15% occupancy and that he was beginning to pay his bills. But at any rate, um, uh, I think that this is, I would advocate for this to be uh, paid for out of the reserve if the funding isn't there in the regular hot fund annual income. Yes, that is the discussion that we had. With Sylvia. Mm -hmm. And um, Mayor, this is um, something when the hot fund item comes back that Phil and I are uh, working with Sylvia on, this will be um, part of that the use of reserve. Okay, then my final comment is just that you all make sure to include everything you want to go up to budget and finance because the way that I hear this being approved, I just don't see how you're gonna sell it to get it past those three layers of approval, committee, mayor, and then council. So um, mayor, are you? do you have an alternate recommendation? Uh, it would be reduced. I uh, know. I mean, that's where, it, as the mayor, I'd like to know that the committee at least discussed that, that they at least recognized it at the committee level, that the hot funds coming in is significantly different in reduction than the retail tax coming in. Correct. Ruth has her hand up. Yeah, and actually, Miles did first. Uh, first of all, I've always felt that going by the definition of hot funds and cultural tourism, that art fest seems to hit all all the bullet points. However, if the money was to come from somewhere other than hot funds, it does free up a lot of our activities to be anything we want them to be. So if it were to come from reserves or general funds, you could maybe tie it into the stores more obviously in a way that's that's not just about cultural tourism. And maybe some of those three levels of stumbling blocks getting to get an approval would say, okay, this is not just an event for continuing with tradition and putting out a good image for for uh, um, Sunset Valley and letting the art be, 
it's also something that can be more blatantly tied into our commercial interests. So that's that's something that is nice that, that you don't have to contend with with hot funds that would be uh, allowed if it was for another source. Mm -hmm. Hi, thank you, Sasha. Um, I love the angle that if we incorporate some of those reserve emergency reserve funds that it gives us more liberty. However, I don't think that budget and finance and and the 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 public works, the environmental committee, all those other committees, they're gonna come forward with saying our stuff is essential and any tap into the emergency fund has to be something that is essential for our peeps. Whereas this is definitely an event that incorporates the outer communities from outside us. I know that ArtFest has a long history, but if it's going to continue, we may need to scale it way back for 2021. Is there something we can do to this motion so, to so do it? 2021 but reduce it even more so, so let me just explain let me just explain the the utilities fund and the public works those are all different restricted funds they cannot use the hot fund to repair a street we cannot use the hot fund to do the utilities work those I are all I'm talking about the emergency reserve no the the reserve for i'm talking about the reserve that's in the hot fund not oh, yeah. it's in the general fund oh i see yeah that's important karen to define that that reserve is specifically a hot fund reserve correct okay very good it, it's it's money that has been put aside each year from the income from the hotel into a reserve for future use it's where um the money's coming from for the marketing rfp as it was approved in the budget for this year. Okay, so after that RFP for marketing, the 20, 230 grand is taken out of that reserve, what's left? Do we have oh, enough? There's, a, there's a, a balance of about 700,000 in there. Oh, crap, okay. So, <laughs> so and, and again, we don't know what we don't know about the hotel, so, if the hotel starts to ramp up, then money's going to start going back into the hot fund, and we wouldn't take as much out of the hot fund reserve. So that's why it's important to keep the different buckets of money and where the funds are in reserve in each fund. So there's street tax that supplies the streets, there's utilities that does the utilities. Yeah. Hot fund is restricted to specifically the hot okay. fund. You can't use each other's restricted funds got it so let's talk about the elephant in the room who else wants their hands on that reserve hot fund that falls within the description of how hot funds can be allocated well the typical um, applicants that people have used it has been uh, ced um, the jdrf diabetes walk and the farmers market mm -hmm. and art fest mm -hmm. Those are the entities that utilize the HUD fund currently. So one of the questions that I have, uh, which is for you, Mayor, and that is, are you feeling like this budget might um, go through better if at least it were reduced in some way? Uh, I just, as I've been sitting in on every single committee and listening to them struggle and ranking things as silver, gold, and bronze and giving stuff up, I, it, I'm i not suggesting that you do it, but maybe you at least go in with an alternate, just something where it's not yes or no from budget and finance. So maybe even if you said, we want this, here's our justification for why we're not reducing the budget for this event, even though other people are reducing the cost for the stuff they're seeking this um, upcoming year um, and then maybe give the alternate so that if budget and finance says no there you guys have these at least presented the backup so that we pick between one of two things your group has put together hmm. okay and karen you would know you and john since you've put you've been so uh, connected to this over the years to what extent can you still have the same number of artists but compromise other portions of the budget? Because the marketing, I mean, one question I would have is how essential is the marketing of it? 
well, at 40,000. The production is where we're right at the max. So all of the tent rentals, the porta potties, the trash, all of that stuff is, and the labor is pretty much, that's we're we're stretching to be able to do it there, especially with the police department requirement for the parking company and all of that. Where there's more flexibility is in advertising. So if we had to negotiate with uh, reducing anything, it could be in paid media. You tell me, Terry. Yeah, the 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 budget that uh, was just uh, the budget to stay the same as last year. That by the finance, in terms of budget and finance, that would be considered a gold level, where all the bells and whistles, nothing's been changed, everything's the same, the gold standard. I think that uh, the committee should have also have a silver level and a bronze level. And those would be the alternative positions for the budget and finance to consider in addition to the gold level. Can I say something here? Of course. Uh, you don't see my hand, but I think maybe we go back to the sponsorships thing. I know Miles. Uh, he he figures we can't get that ten thousand, but he got half of it from one source, and that was Central Market. So I think, and also Miles, we have more time. You you were doing that in a very short yeah. matter of months, uh, and you were still able to get that. So I think if we got a package together, got started on it pretty quick. And I know there's so many other um, events here in town that are, are going to be going for some of those same dollars. And it's going to be, I know uh, uh, sponsorships are going to be much harder with this COVID thing. I, I do understand that. But th to me, that could drop us down to a silver if we said we'll try to do part of that with the sponsorships. And if we don't make it, we don't make it. You know, I mean, we can try. You you stopped it before it got got anywhere. A clarification: The Central Market was going to be the premier uh, solo banner sponsorship, but you can't get two or three of them. That would be those at the top level. Uh, maybe you could sell another fifteen hundred dollars to someone to have smaller logos on the stage or oh, yeah. other places. But there comes a point where you just have too many too many sponsors. Uh, so. Um, uh, I, I don't. I wouldn't feel comfortable promising ten thousand dollars. I would. I would feel comfortable saying five thousand. Um, we don't know what the competition is going to be. Where where the uh, public outreach is going to be at uh, companies like Central Market. Uh, we don't know if Home Depot, which I always wanted to approach but wasn't able to, um, would be uh, uh, interested. And for some of them, it's just a drop in the bucket. But in the post-COVID world, maybe it's not. So to clarify, and, and in summary, that $5,000 was for Central Market to be the big guy on top. And if anything, other ones, they'd be the smaller ones on the bottom, and they'd be a much lower amounts. But if you wanted to add money to it, based on my early success and in such a short period of time, as you noted, John, you can certainly put $5,000 as a, a sponsorship um, 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 uh, input of cash. I mean, it's no reason to think we can't get it. If we had to sell a bunch of small ones, we would at least equal that. But I don't think we could get three five thousands or two five thousands. That's fine. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's really um, reasonable to do the smaller, do the top one, and then the smaller ones. That's usually how sponsorship package or packages are built. What you could do is. Put this uh, budget in as your gold budget, and you could do an alternative budget as a silver with a five thousand dollars sponsorship offset. Mm -hmm. Rob, I, this is just my question: Who who is our advocate in front of the budget committee to say, "Look what we're doing. We're trying to, you know, we're asking for less money. We were able to get a bunch of money back from the 2020 event. We're going to go after sponsorships." There's 900 for miscellaneous on-site labor. I can take the day, empty garbage cans or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I live right here. I could probably even do overnight security for it. Uh, but like, <laughs> who, who is good? Like, if we ask for less money and then it just comes back as like, no, like, who is there to? Well, let me say two, two things about that, Rob, and then Terry, I'll come to you. Um, our, our committee is our advocate, and traditionally the chair has been the strongest advocate and the co-chair. Um, but every committee member that gets in touch with someone about this makes a huge difference. And so um, we do need to assure that somebody is there in that role in a very concrete manner. I, just, um, you know, I appreciate Rose saying, like, hey, you need to there needs to be some defense of this. Like you can't just go in and be like, what COVID and expect to get the same amount of money. But like, is there going to be a room where we're sitting and someone goes, why do you, why do you need this much money? Defend the fact that, you know, you can still command this much. It looks like, it looks like Terry has an answer to that. Yeah. The budget and finance, are like the other committees, there's a citizen comment uh, period. And there's also the open town hall, the opportunity to write up the specifications, et cetera, and put them in there. And they'll all be read prior to the meeting by the members. And that would be your, there won't be a, a series of sales presentations, different committees coming in and, and, and trying to sell their gold level or silver level or bronze level. So, but, so your input would be the kind of like the normal input, which is, Citizen comments and uh, written comments. Now uh, I'm there because I'm on the Arts Commission. I can go into the, the details that other members of Budget and Finance might have that aren't covered in what you have to say. But it would be important for you all to show up. Yeah. Where where their input is available to you. Absolutely. And I've uh, I've filled the heck out of the uh, citizen comment on open gov i assume they get read but like it seems that like the people that call in are the ones that kind of come through the loudest but uh so yeah call in leave a comment leave a comment on open gov do both but all right so it seems that we are at a decision point which is um and I think the mayor was suggesting that we should do this is to sort of present our gold versus um, bronze standard for our budget. Yes, Troy. So this is a, a question for the for our commission members, but a a bronze level could be as drastic as as potentially changing the format of art fest to reduce music i don't want to it i think it's integral to art fest but if we if the the push comes to shove and we want to continue art fest at a reduced budget you know we could s strip live music out and i i i say that only as an option not something that I really want to advocate, but that that could be something where we don't have live music. We we have a system with music playing background, but you know it would change the character of our fest for 2021 uh, if that was the only way we could successfully produce it. But I'm interested in your comments on whether that could be a bronze, you know, the the, the bottom. The bottom ask for budget for 2021 Hardfest. Thoughts? Well, uh, I just added it up. It uh, looks like it's Terry's I Troy's idea would take off about 26,000, right? Music production managers, stage equipment engineers, and also take off some money off the uh, ad agency, uh, whatever they have to do about managing it. So that's $26,000 off the top. Uh, and maybe you have less paid media uh, at the same time because it's you know it's going to be a smaller event. It used to be less of a draw if you don't have music. So you know, being, you know it's going to be less of a draw, maybe you cut the advertising budget in half as well. So now you're up to like um, 
of you know near forty thousand dollars less. Okay. But that's changed the complete nature of it. Absolutely. Other comments, Ruth. Uh, real quick, it wasn't like the buoy high drum corps and some of the other um, entertainment at no cost to us. No cost or close to no cost. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering if we can at least still provide some kind of entertainment to the public that's at you know that's representing the community that's of no cost. Yeah. Well, another we're all totally limiting performing arts. Since my husband is a performing artist, thinking of those sure. people. <laughs> well, and another alternative would be to not totally eliminate the music, but reduce the amount of music. Um, other commentaries, then I'll come back to you, Miles. Other commentaries from the rest of the group? No? Okay, Miles. Uh, one of the biggest costs is the actual stage and the, uh, the equipment, the engineers, that's $7,700, and the production manager. So actually having the stage becomes a big uh, cost just to start. Now, the buoy um, drum corps is something they could actually be marching around or something. Uh, but if you, but let's consider what's, what would it be like without the music? Will people come? Will it be fun? And how, how important has music become to when When I've asked uh, Karen, uh, what were the biggest drawers? Um, it was it music, the arts, or the children's entertainment? She thoughtfully answered equal. Um, so uh, if you don't have the music, is that, and, but you do have the children and the arts, is it now two thirds of size? And is that still a successful event? It sounds like it would be, particularly if you're going to be reducing your advertising uh, and also all that money for the music. Okay. And if I may, one key point of advertising in these period of, of post-COVID is going to be digital media. And I, obviously, I'm a digital media professional, and I would love to train some of you to do it too, so that we can all just put forth volunteer time to keep the buzz going on social media and other digital networks so that this can happen despite any advertising budget shortfalls. Excellent. All right, so do we have any specific suggestions? And Karen, I don't want to take over where you're, um, what you're doing by any means, but could we, do we want to then offer three possible budgets, given these various ideas. Uh, John had his hand up. Sorry, you can't see him. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say um, <clears throat> that I think uh, the artists uh, consider our art fest uh, a rank above many of the others because of the music. Uh, we, we always, we've always uh, had some, some, especially our headliners, been very well-known uh, musicians and everything. So, yeah, it would be a loss, but I think they would also understand, as everybody's having to understand right now, uh, that things are different. Things have to be pared down. Things are, uh, you know, uh, like the kids. Uh, it's, it's great that they have the Biscuit Brothers, who are rock stars among the the kids and all that. But you could all they they would get just as entertained by a, 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 a you know somebody coming up there um, and and doing um, oh I don't know you know just a, a a little playhouse or some puppet show or whatever. Uh, and 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 I think we could do uh, music that's that's more uh, not necessarily a concert, but just uh, um, just to, just to have some other kind of entertainment that that doesn't have to have stages and all that. So as Miles was pointing out. Um, by just taking all of that out, we we cut almost uh, budget in half. Uh, 
besides what uh, in, uh, of the uh, operating budget. And we could cut down on the advertising. We probably could cut down on, um, no, just kind of going through here, the tent and tables and the, and uh, the, the, the big uh, tents and things like that that we do. I mean, we could go through this, but I mean, to me, if we have to have something for Monday, I think what we do is just have uh, kind of go back to the gold, silver, bronze uh, thing again, and just say that if we were to cut the music, and the, some of the things we're talking about uh, with just the numbers we could, we've just done kind of on the top of our head here, we could probably come up with, um, I don't know, maybe a, um, half the budget or maybe two thirds of what we normally do or something like that. Uh, and, and then hopefully some sponsorships. Uh, I don't know if not having the music and all the rest of it, we get the same level of sponsorship, though, you know, because, or, you know, you have to think about where we've come, but at the same time, with just the the whole new scenario of everything, um, I think they would understand. They, they lost some uh, income from us not having it so they would love to see it happen again and um so we should just try to come up with a, a couple of different budgets i guess okay so what what i'm hearing because I, I see we're we're we still have to look at the general fund and we're not through the hot fund yet so um what i'm hearing is the existing budget uh would be the gold level and what I'm hearing is the bronze level would be uh, eliminating the music and the costs associated with the music. Is that is that correct? Yes. So Troy? yes, yes, and I have a comment. And one is, do we do we risk a dangerous precedent by proposing a a cut rate budget? For a scaled down art fest, and you know, does that does having that on the table become the the low cost budget bid? I think it does. I, well, you know, there's something in marketing known as anchoring. I think if you offer three prices, people often go for the middle one. You know, so like if we go 40, 30, 20, or whatever, you know, finance might be like. 30, that sounds good. So it's like, I don't know. I, I'd like I, I to discuss like what we get for the money later, but if we can just move it forward and just say gold, silver, bronze, we'll make it work. I mean, my parents never knew how much money they were gonna have. They just kind of made it work. We'll figure it out. So like, let's just throw $3 amounts down and send it on and see what we get. So like, maybe we don't zero out the music budget, but we cut it in half, I, I, I don't know. Uh, different options. I, we, we yeah. So the I bronze, would... the way it's defined by finance, and the way city's looking at it, is bronze is essential, right? And silver is essential plus, and gold is if you can have everything you want. So perhaps the bronze, the absolute minimum would be eliminating the music. Um, that's essential just to have the art fest without the music maybe then the silver is um with the music or maybe with half of the music and half of the advertising the paid the paid media um so that we look at uh those three bronze silver and gold bronze would be absolute bare bones that's essential terry um, you're on finance and, and you you came up with those Part of coming up with those levels i think that's how it's being interpreted isn't it i'm not sure he, Terry, karen was asking you that question yes yeah the bronze is the essential the gold is uh 
is so based, in this case would be what what arts commission got last year and the silver would be essential plus to make a more successful event than essential would be and i just have one question um and that is even though we're thinking about redefining what this event is do you think this event would lose the, a large part of its impact if it had no music at all really ruth has ruth. her hand up ruth ruth hi um i don't know that you can say no music just no cost music we certainly can find some kind of performance that involves a very low if no cost at all i mean after all we are a community a lot of the public school kids in the sunset valley area from crockett Bowie is right next door and who knows what other local artists that might be interested in providing us some free music so i i like the idea of a bronze being no cost music and maybe uh, a low amount of sponsorship, and then the silver being a portion of music, maybe half. I'm not sure how that would work out because stage is a significant stage and sound system is a significant cost if you have any. And then the gold, obviously, being all the full uh, schedule of musicians that we had before. So I don't think we want to send it off as this means no performing artists. I think it just means no paid performing arts. No budget, no budget for musicians. Uh -huh. There um, will be there will be performing artists. We just won't pay anything for them. But we still yeah, need a stage. I have, I have a them. suggestion. There's different different levels of staging and different levels of sound systems too. But you could go with just the stage that we have for the kids area, which right. is yeah. not a, a risen stage. It's um, just off the ground level. Mm -hmm. And you could just have that one stage, um, and all the performances could be on that one stage. It's a it's a less expensive. It doesn't have the solar. Uh, well, it does have solar panels, but it's not the whole big setup on the big raised stage. Exactly. That was gonna be my. This is Matt. That was gonna be my suggestion for the silver kind of pitch. Is that yeah? You would just have the small, smaller scaled backstage. Then you're not having big acts, but you still have some elements of the live music that we had before. You know, we have to we have to remember too that a lot of the musicians here in town uh, are uh, really hurting for work. So we may be able to get some decent musicians uh, that would give us a, a bit of a deal too. I I this is Rob. I you know, I I love how it's always the musicians who are rolling in money, and it's just like yeah. stick it to them. It's just like stick it to the the advertising. Advertising budgets are in the toilet, which would be like here is something we want to advertise. Screw you, take it or leave it. I don't know. It's just like it we it's like a thing where we just like take advantage of the the less fortunate around here. So. I, I'm for like I personally am for getting rid of the big stage because I'm a parent and it's like I don't even go over there. I go directly to the small stage because it's like leave me alone for you know 20 minutes. Um, but and as for advertising, we certainly can keep that cut because I certainly can coach you all how we can exploit every one of our networks and get the word out and find people come to our event. The past digital marketing of this event has been way under met. I mean, it's just underexploited. There is so much more we could be doing in it. Because we haven't directed but, them to do digital marketing. Yes. So, and you know what, in spite of that, we've had huge crowds. It's It's gone on now for 13 years. It's, it's bigger and bigger. So it is it is a known event, especially we don't sell, we don't sell alcohol. We're not a bunch of drunks running around there. It's it's a family friendly event that people love coming to, so we've already built that up. People know Art Fest and what it is. Okay. Yes. Let's get my first discussion. Um, so, Karen, my question for you. Um, hand up, Sasha. I'm sorry. Who? James. Oh, yes, James. 
I, I've really got to get going. So I, if we're going to vote on something, I'd like to vote on something soon. It's because it's eight o'clock already. And yeah. I don't have really stuff to do. Like I haven't eaten supper yet. Oh, bless you. Let me give you some more stuff, right? right? <laughs> no, I'm so, going home. I mentioned a cracker. Commission, can I just remind that there is a motion on the floor, um, which was to ex produce our fest 2021 with the with the, the the budget as as we discussed, we went through and and took out the 10,000, and then there's been all this discussion, uh, but basically we're coming up with three levels, like a gold, silver, and bronze. Uh, so Rob, you ended up making the motion. So do you want to amend your motion? I yeah, do, I mean, do we need to just give like a like a one amount, or do they need to see this whole breakdown? Three amounts. Uh, a three amount, because like, we, again, like, I feel like we can have a lot of these discussions later to determine what, exactly. you know, it, it's it's good to know, like, they say like, well, what is gold, what's bronze, and we can kind of roughly know what it is. But yeah, I think, I think three amounts, uh, is that what the current motion is? I think the motion that, okay, Matt, I'll let you address that because you wrote it. Uh, address the. If you could read the motion that Rob made just so it's clear. Original motion? The original motion was just to, to produce Art Fest 2021 with the budget at the original amount uh, that, that, you know, Karen presented to us tonight minus the 10,000. Okay, so the question is, Rob, do you want to uh, re retract that, and should we restate the motion? Uh, sure, I'll withdraw my original motion. Can, I, I, would suggest, I would suggest you make three motions. One motion for the gold level, one motion for what the silver would be, and one motion for what the bronze would be. Because That's true. Yeah, because I'm gonna have to take this now and and redo the figures and put that all together for Monday. You're saying I'm gonna uh, help you. I'll, I'll take the here's what I, here's what I say. Instead of going to the 80, which is which would have been the goal, we go 80, 60, and 40, and then we just back into the all of those. I don't know and, if that's gonna work. I mean, I'm gonna have well, to run the numbers. We can still do them as three okay. numbers in our heads. Let's think that the the 40 i can't see us doing a, a, an event anything like what we're uh known for for less than forty thousand. so that would be our okay draw. you could do that but it would be easier to figure it out if you all said this is the gold let's pass this motion for the gold level yeah and somebody make another motion that the silver be with just the kids stage, then I can back all of that out. That would would be everything that goes with the main stage. And then the bronze would be no paid music. Mm -hmm. uh, so, or something like that. But one yeah. motion at a time so we know how to work it down. If you just say 20 or 60 or 40, I don't know where to take that number from. Yeah. So Rob, you could restate your motion and call it the gold. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to do the easy one. I make a motion to have one offer of the gold budget, which is unchanged from 2020. Okay. And I can second that motion. Okay. Okay, we'll um, take the um, yeah, we'll yeah. vote. roll on that, Matt. Okay. Uh, Ruth? Yes, sir. Vote, vote on the Rob's motion for the gold Aye. budget. Okay. Joe? Aye. James? Absolutely. It was Rob's motion. So, Troy? Aye. Uh, Miles? Yes. Terry? Yes, for the gold standard. Yeah, that would be. And James? I mean, sorry, James, uh, John. Sorry. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Okay. Yes. Silver. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Yes. All right. Ruth, you want to make this motion? Ruth, you want to make the motion for silver? We're going to need a little coaching as to what the parameters are for the numbers. Or do you need parameters, Karen? You just so, need to know. No, I think 
if you just say that the silver level would be half of the music budget, half of the advertising budget, then I can back out the things that go with that. I saw uh, that. I, 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 <laughs> I don't know if that's fair. Is that not fair? <laughs> okay. So, so Ruth, Ruth made the motion, and we'll have Joe second for yes. the silver with silver uh, budget, half music, half advertising. Half paid media, yeah. Excellent. Half paid media. There we go. All right. So uh, now we. James, or did he already head out? <laughs> James had to go. Okay. Young. So Rob, your vote. Aye. Aye. Troy. Aye. Miles. Yes. Terry. Aye. John. Aye. And Sasha. Aye. All right. Motion passes. All right. And, and then the bronze level is what I heard you saying was to eliminate the budget for paid music blue ball ice cream <laughs> all right <laughs> and then are we still at half the advertising budget i think we need to have no paid advertising no paid performing artists which will result in us having to create that ourselves through community sources and volunteer sources some advertising. I, we have to have some advertising, Ruth. It can't all be social. What? I mean, TV, we do a lot of TV. some TV, uh, radio, uh, radio something, <laughs> something to get it out there. Not everybody is uh, goes on social media, uh, you know, I agree. I agree. 20, yeah, in the morning till nine o'clock at night. 25% uh, advertising budget. As for a there we go. Yeah. That's an option. Okay. All right. So, is there a motion on the floor about them? And and no, were you saying that and no paid media or no paid music? Right. That's no paid. No. Paid, no yes. paid music and tw we'll say twenty five percent of the the advertising budget. Paid media advertising. That work? We we need a motion from a commission member. I make that motion. Thanks, Joe. Do we have a second? I second. Sasha. All right, for the votes. Rob. Right. <laughs> <Mid> ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> Ruth, you're in are, are you in favor of the bronze? Right. Rob, yes or no? No, to you. It's up to you, Ruth. Rob said yes. Yeah. Mine's I. Sorry, Ruth, Rob sound the same. <laughs> Troy? Aye. Miles? Aye. Terry? Aye. Aye. John? Aye. We did right. it. Motion passes. Yes, so. Okay. Now, Thank Karen, I'll be, I'll be happy to sit with you this whenever we need to to modulate these. Okay. Yeah, we we'll have to do it tomorrow and Friday because we'll have to submit it on Monday. Um, so uh -huh. we can work on that, and then uh, we still have the other budget to do, the general fund budget. Yes, we do. And so I'm going to. We normally try not to go over two hours. But it looks like we're going to need 15 or 20 minutes for what's left. Begging your apologies. This one should be pretty oh. easy, I would think. Um, I think. This is a general fund. And on the left is where our budget was this year. Of course, the whole thing except for the storage unit was, um, was cut in the COVID uh, cuts. And um, council also uh, is now requiring that even though, uh, so you, you ask for a dollar amount and then before you can spend that, then you come forward with a budget uh, to use that money before it's approved. So the budget on the right 
would be how we would submit our general fund request. Uh, Ray Jean did say there's going to be probably uh, to anticipate an increase in the storage unit. So that's kind of a set fee, but then the number you want to ask for is up to you. And this is for the community events. Um, 4,000 would be about half, a little more than half. So it's up to you. You can ask for something, nothing, more, less. Bob? What are we storing? Oh, um, well, we're storing 11 tenths, all the weights for all the tents. We're storing all of these sandwich signs, all the signs for Art Fest, all the lighting for the concerts we've done, all of the decorations that we do for the community events. It's, we just built two gigantic buildings and we don't have enough room to, to store well, this stuff. We asked for a storage unit, never got it. We asked for storage, storage space. space. And they, they didn't design it into public works. So. Now, if the city comes up with space where we can move all that to public works somewhere, then we can, but right now, we don't have, um, we have not been, uh, it has not been indicated that that is the case. Not to dwell on this like little line item here, but how big is the, how big is the space? Eight by 10. That's it? Yeah. Like you can buy an eight by 10 shed at Home Depot we, for like $2,000. No so way. we've been there, done that. We had a shed and it was at Public Works and it got infested with rats and all of our stuff had rat urine and rat yeah poop all i'll over never it. go in there so, <laughs> so just saying um that that became a option that was not very viable and then when they tried to move it they broke it and um that's when they Enough told us sad. to go to the storage unit so Right now, that's where everything's safe. If we can find another safe place, that can be a future event. But right now, that's where we are. If one of these musical acts is two thousand dollars. I know. I know. Uh, you didn't see that shed. <laughs> the rest of us did. Enough right. said. <laughs> you would have gagged. Well, just opening the door. Believe me. All right, so really the this is that's of course one can save money that way, but the question is, um, shall we plan on doing it, an event, and are we good with proposing this budget? Troy. So I need some education. What so do we in, do we have a vision for what this event is? No. Not yet could be determined um, and you would have to build that event out with a budget. It would have to go to council before you could spend the money. Are these uh, are these like the, like when the women come with the drums or when we have, is that those kind of events? Yeah, yeah. Culture, movie Let's night, not. concert. Movie night, movie night at City Hall. Yep. Yes, and things like um, the Argentine Tango Night and the cultural events that we've had, Scottish Night, et cetera, et cetera. That's real what they are. If I, if I can have a real quick follow up, and it's, uh, I, I, I'm fine with us just like pulling in one direction for Arts Fest. That's like our marquee event. Some of these other things, I like, I wish they were better attended, but it's usually like, me and the Rosengarten uh, household, <laughs> and that that's it. So like, it, it, I but I don't want to give them up forever. Like, but we can we can do this again when our fans finances are better. Uh, like if we if we gave away some money here, even though it's two separate funds, did can we be shown as a group to be like reasonable? Like maybe we don't do this, but like you know we really want to do this over here. They are two separate funds. There's no sharing of money, but like, this is what we care about. Well, this budget shows that we are giving back some money by reducing the amount. Um, you can do whatever you feel you want to do. It's up to you. Right. Okay, Miles. Uh, I'm not keen on the small event uh, because when I first joined the uh, 
commission actually for uh it was back in october as a citizen uh attending meeting i i was disturbed that there wasn't any type of criterion what makes it a successful event and i then learned the same people basically could come to the events and then i was told that having the free food was a big inducement so then it was no longer an art centered event but rather a party for a select group of same people each and every time so i'm not saying that every one if small event you had has suffered from this but it didn't seem like it was heading in a successful direction particularly as you repeated the uh, women drumming troupe so um uh, i'm not too unless it gets more more clarity in what the event is and what you're trying to accomplish and what makes it successful i'm not so interested in uh, promoting it that's my feeling about it okay and of course that would be up to the commission to determine and come up with what criteria you wanted to use um, um right I, but they haven't done it since october it's my point is that it's just if it was mentioned and never even made it to the minutes it finally got to the minutes the next month i know we've been busy with other things but we did increase our membership by uh like 300 percent and it still has never been discussed so my feeling is that it's just continuing as things have always been in the past which is running on your own concept of what works without accepting any other uh, uh some sort of oversight or some sort of uh, uh way of showing outcomes that uh city hall and the residents would want to know so it's been a long time and it's we're still in the same place you're just asking for money to do the same thing without showing it's going to be any different hmm. um other thoughts about that ruth ruth um, would it be beneficial for us to follow the pattern that we just did, which is bring out a gold and a silver and a bronze level of funding from the general fund? Perhaps taking this kind of budget that's right here proposed for 2021 and saying that's maybe our gold or bronze even, and then backing off or adding to it? It looks like as it's slotted in here, it's already a silver or or bronze. Oh, you're talking about the 1920 budget versus the 2021 budget? Yeah, because it looks like it was like four thousand dollars for some sort of events, and then yeah. what seven thousand uh, dollars for the last year for events. So that's already almost half. But and the bronze could be just storage unit rental. <laughs> art fest <laughs> or art commission. Yeah. Yeah. Can I can I uh, just throw out an idea uh, that I, I thought maybe the arts commission because there's been such a big um, angst over the shopping centers and and everything uh, and how so many other smaller towns have their christmas lights and they have the lights up on their uh, a lot of them historic uh, city halls and all this stuff is maybe just to maybe just to cheer up our own community our own residents as well as help uh uh perhaps guide people towards the shopping is to put lights up on city hall and i met with uh, and james was with me the other day we met with uh, a guy from abc pest control they also do holiday lighting and we came up with uh he came up with a price uh of putting lights on city hall around the front and the two sides and doing a mini version of what city of austin does with the lighting of the big tree uh, that they have at zilker park every year this would be a pole that stands up about 14 feet tall and it has strings of lights just like that does and we found a beautiful spot right there on the uh, grass between city hall and pd on the city hall side of the driveway 
And uh, so that would be colored lights. Then there'd be the city hall. And then I don't know if you guys, you've been uh, coming down Jones, just where you turn around the island there in front of city hall, there's that ugly uh, brick enclosure with a, with a wooden lattice, like sort of halfway around it, that we could put some kind of lighting on that as well and banner or something like uh, uh, shopping this way, you know, great shopping straight ahead, whatever, on a banner to people going towards the shopping center. So he gave us a price of the tree was $32.94, uh, City Hall was $1,300, and then there would be a takedown fee. Uh, and if they do, and we would own the lights, uh, and then the next next year's would be probably half that if we invited them back. So this would just be a way to brighten up uh, City Hall, like nothing like Johnson City and all these others where people come from miles around to see the, the lights on City Hall. But it, it would just be a way to brighten things up and hopefully uh, uh, just be a, a beacon towards people coming to the shopping centers to shop. And anyway, so that total was fifty-one eighty-nine, and that was the tree, city hall, and the takedowns. So that's so, um, John. Yes. That idea sounds very charming to me, um, and we could certainly look at that. And I appreciate the work you've done at looking that in detail. Um, what I think we might need to do for this budget is just say, do we want to have one expense under the general fund and then we can flesh out what it would be um because i think that's really all we need to decide for tonight um that's correct uh, sasha and it could be any of the events that you all discussed at your last meeting people just trash the events no. don't forget the events no, John, it's an no i don't want to trash events it doesn't have to be an event it, you don't have to do an event, but do you want to do something that's under the arts from the general fund? So, all right, so I'm going to make a motion that we do have a general fund event and that we have a budget for that for this budget year. So, no tears, just one. Or Sasha, can you clarify? Are we talking 1920? We're talking about this next fiscal year, 2021. Okay. okay. And I'm what I'm saying is one event, or if we want to make two events out of the amount of money we asked for. I wasn't thinking. I myself was not thinking about tiering this one, just because it's not a very large budget item. And I think it gives us the flexibility we need to um, decide how we want to proceed in that regard. Questions, comments? I, I, you know, I w w we were we were thinking that like whatever Art Fest is next year, it's going to be scaled back. This and by the time we get to Art Fest season. That's the direction we should be pulling, and we shouldn't. I, you know, we should be able to do multiple things at once. But like some other event would probably come before it, correct? And could be up till September. Next September. So, okay, then maybe it's more likely that we'd be able to use it. Um, man. Okay. I was just thinking out loud there. Take note. I just uh, let me just give a personal perspective. I hate to see this part go away because actually, despite the fact that sometimes not so many people show up, this is a Sunset Valley specific event, not the large community event or this. Yes, Lisa, I'll come to you in one sec. And um, we've had a variety of um, successes in this regard, whether it be art class or International Cultural Day, et cetera. 
and also taking Miles's point that yes, these things should be measured better, but I would hate to see them disappear myself. And Lisa, did you have a comment? Oh yeah, I, I was late for the meeting. I'm I'm really sorry that I'm late. Um, but I just wanted to say that I heard kind of through the ether that that um y'all were considering doing a winter fair for gift giving, and I just wanted to. I was really excited about that idea, as were some other neighbors. And I just wanted to chime in as a resident and say that I really support and love that idea to do a, a winter fair to also feature local artists and uh, put it in the shopping center in the home. Was it the Brody Homestead uh, little area that was considered being rented out or something? Um, I think that would be such a boon for the shops in the area as well. And it would pull people right into the mall area. So. I just wanted to voice my support for that idea. I don't know who it was or how I heard that. But. Uh, yeah, was it on the uh, discussion tonight, Lisa? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. No, but it's the first time I've heard it. Yeah, I haven't heard of that before. Nobody's heard it. It ties into potential future events, so it's all good. Thank yeah, you, Lisa. It must have been a CED idea then. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was a new art fest that was down near the no, shopping. No, we had mall. actually we had tossed that around uh, last meeting. We had like some short term and some long term ideas about like what we can do, and so uh, that was one that kind of fit in there with like a, a long term. I I think I think it was on the CED uh, group as well. Like so, it's like a shared idea between the two. Um, yeah. But th this meeting is all budget. Super fun. Gotcha. Okay, so just wanted to let you know. Thanks. Have Thanks a great night, you. guys. Thanks for all the work you're doing. Thank you. Bye. Okay, group, we need to, um, we had a motion, right? My motion, which was to keep a general fund event for this year. And Rob, you were discussing trying to get it tiered. Uh, you know, I, if this is, I don't think we're going to go higher than this, and I don't think you can get much for less than this. But maybe we just do one, and you know, like I, I, this feels kind of cold-hearted to say. It's just like I won't be, uh, I won't be like super upset if they're just like no. Uh, but like, they, they always are fun. Like we always go to the events, and you know, sometimes they are underattended. But like I don't think it's the event fault. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I would if uh, I would second that motion. Can you tell uh, me this night it's like almost nine o'clock. Anyway. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, so, um, let's see. Matt, could you read the motion? Matt, have we lost you? Oh, sorry, sorry. So your motion, Sasha, was to have a general fund event or I guess have a general fund budget. Uh, did you mean to have it as what Karen drafted with the 4,000 plus the storage unit rental? I did, yes. Okay, and it was seconded by Rob. Um, yeah, so do we do we wanna vote on that motion? There was also a discussion of a tier. Um, I, I kinda just saw in the video, you know, people, or I think Ruth, you know, you mentioned too, uh, do we want to like make it a two tier where we say, okay, the first tier is like we ask for the four thousand plus the storage, and then the the essential is just the storage. I see Ruth Ruth nodding. Although although Matt and commission members, I would I, I would I would say that the gold should be what last year's budget ask was or budget was, and the silver be what's what's proposed on the screen. It's a good mm -hmm. shout, Karen. What what was the reason for the reduction? I think they were trying to do levels, Rob. Um, and uh, one thing I would just suggest on the on what budget that the motion is about is if you change the um, wording to production budget and not have it be an event, because it could be lighting, it could be whatever you all come up with and all those mm -hmm. ideas that you had, um, you can build those out. It doesn't have to be an event. 
I would just okay. call it a production budget. All right. I'm going to withdraw my second team. Sorry, Sasha. Okay. Anybody want to second that? You might have to repeat what we would be seconding. I'm not sure where we're at. Yeah. So, Sasha, did you, so do you just want to stick with the original motion or are you wanting to amend it with the tier levels as the commission has been discussion, discussing? Uh, let's amend it with the tier levels. I second that if, if Robert yeah. drew his score. And especially if the of event would be taken out of the description. So it's just a production budget. Production budget. And then, so it was suggested that we, so Troy, you suggested the gold uh, is like asking for the same as last year. The, yes. the kind of middle ground, the silver is asking for this 4,000 plus the storage unit. And then the, the bronze, the essential is the commission has to have the, the storage unit, but with no uh, production budget. So oh. Sasha, you, you, you're okay with that? Motion. I am totally okay with that. Okay. Going on forever. And uh, and then and then who seconded for my notes? Okay. Oh, thank you. Sure. All right, I'm gonna call for the vote. Uh, Rob. Uh, I. Ruth. Troy. Thank you. I. Uh, Miles left the scene for a moment. Uh, Terry. I. I guess that's an abstain for Miles. Oh, John. Hi. Sorry. How about, how about Joe? Joe's on commission. Oh, um, yeah, but he, he made he second the motion. Second motion, so oh, really sorry. doesn't vote. But I'll vote again <laughs> if you want. Hi. Doesn't count. Hi, Sasha. And Sasha, yes, <laughs> make the motion. So, okay, motion passes. Thank you for keeping okay. track of that, Matt. We have two okay. two budgets to well. Six budgets to present. <laughs> and I will help, Karen, I will help you and Sasha. I because you know I've been taking notes, so um and and kind of live editing, so I can help you guys with this. So and I am I'm open on Friday for that. Okay. Bluebells okay. on Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um moving right along. Thank you all. That was um you did a good a great job, Karen, with um, leading us through that discussion. And uh, I appreciate Rose jumping in and talking about tiering more because I think that's probably true that we won't get success if we just go for the largest amount. Um, so in terms of old business, um, I just mainly wanted to have you all look at the document that was produced that we kind of synthesized from all of your thoughts in the past. Um, and I don't know that we need to discuss them much more here, but it's something that I think we definitely need to have be the point of focus of our next meeting. Right, okay. May okay. I move that we table this until our next meeting? I, I believe you can move that. Does anybody second that movement? I second it. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Aye. That's the majority. All right. Motion passes. <laughs> okay. And in terms of um, the new business, basically, the old business is the focus of the meeting of for the new business, unless there are things we need to add. Are we set on that? Okay. Um, everybody take a deep breath and congratulate yourselves for having gotten through all of this. And I really appreciate your hard work in that regard, all of you. Um, any other final comments for the good of the community? I move that we adjourn. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I second that. All in favor? You all have a good evening and apologize to your spouses or anybody about having been kept too late. Thank you.
Matt, Thank Sasha. You. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.